Yo, yo, yo. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Okay, we did two videos doing a little bit of back content here. Okay, oh my goodness. We're going through the psychosocial stages life from uh, one of my favorite psychologists, Erickson. Wonderful. Huge. Uh, I'm getting a little out of breath here because I just did the other videos. And then I'm like, you know what? Let me just piggyback through all the psychosocial stages. So we did uh, intimacy versus isolation. We did uh, identity versus role confusion. Next, we're going to do generativity versus stagnation. Uh, I'm looking at myself here. Camera's right there. I promise you I'm not on Google or anything. This is all memorized. Uh, but first, quick plug again. Okay, oh my goodness. Uh, here we go. Not Every Star of the Night. Wonderful. My second novel. So good. Like a nice little sci-fi horror for you. My first novel, Yami Kage. Oh, my goodness. Lovely. Look at that mate. Oh, look at that gloss. And, of course, Bright Dreadful Sun. Lovely. But a little bit about uh, my experience with having epilepsy. It was pretty cool. Uh, anyways, so how can I, it doesn't matter about my novels too much, you know, I mean, I go ahead and pick one up, but it matters about you. I want to help you with your writing and how am I going to do that? The best way I know how is uh, with psychology. Okay, I'm a psychology major, licensed, and that's what we do. Okay, we try to understand the soul. Okay, so we might wonder, how can this be applied to writing? Okay, if you saw the other videos, you see how, but I'll yell it again. Uh, if you're writing human characters or human-like characters, they're going to have human or human-like psychology behind them. And it's really good to understand psychology because once you understand yourself, like I said in the other video, I think it was either Aristotle or Socrates that said, you know, human, know thyself. Because when you understand your own personal psychosocial stage, your own challenges that you face during these stages of life, you can write a little bit more accurate characters, okay? You want to have accurate characters. You want to have, like, characters that are just like, whatever. You know, you know what I mean? Uh, they don't seem as believable. Once you start mute incorporating true, accurate psychology into your characters, then they become more relatable. They become more memorable. So what are we talking about here today? We got done with the teenagers. See you later, teenagers. I hope you find your identity, your ego identity, so you can move on to intimacy versus isolation, which happens in young adulthood, okay? Where you're trying to find that, that lovey-dovey, okay? You're trying to find that love for you or else you're going to be isolated. And like, once again, I said, intimacy doesn't always mean smoochy, smoochy. <laughs> it can mean, you know, latching onto a goal, latching onto your friends. I say latch. I don't know why it's like, it's more kind of like anchor yourself. Because once you're not like truly intimate with someone, let's say you're, you're married or something, you know, I was the same time, you could have a little bit too much of this too. And this is actually where I want to kind of uh, touch on this next part is generativity versus stagnation in middle adulthood. I also want to show you uh, a lot of the concepts that happen. So with that being said, I call them the pillars uh, just because I, I understand like Kabbalah and all that kind of weird stuff. So on one hand, uh, you are, you have the negative kind of side of the psychosocial stage, whereas on the other side, you have kind of more the positive. One lifts you up, the other brings you down. And as you enter the next stage of life, you either have a crush on you or you're ready to go, you know? So with that being said, generativity versus stagnation. A lot of characters that you're going to write have, especially our adults, you know what I mean? Maybe if you're, you're out of the young adult fiction stage, but I mean, you're probably going to have adults in there anyways, but... Uh, the point here being is once you reach middle adulthood, okay, you're already in the fray. This is where we, we thrive for most of our lives. Maybe not thrive, but this is where we, we survive for most of our lives in, in adulthood because this is the widest encompassing one. Uh, so generativity versus stagnation. What does that mean? What does that mean for you? Uh, it could be a job. It could be lacking yourself to a goal that is higher than yourself, higher than yourself, more for like humanity. Uh, you writers out there, you know, we at the end of the day, we we put our heart and souls into writing something. We generate and we're hoping that this, you know, gets out and provides value for other people. That's the point of your writing. Also, just jot that down. You know, what I mean, you don't write for yourself all the time. You write for other people. You want them to like learn something for yourself. And this is why I'm trying to help you help them. You know, what I mean, if that makes sense. Hopefully I can send out a ripple. So you're writing adult. Uh, I'm going to go back to uh, some certain examples I used earlier before. Uh, I like using Star Wars just because they they nail it on a lot of good cylinders. Uh, there's novels that come from Star Wars that didn't originate. It's a screenplay uh, with a lot of really cool influences, but we're not going to get into those influences. We're going to get into certain specific characters. Uh, what I want to do is bring up Anakin Skywalker, a.k.a. Darth Vader. All right, you know, hopefully y'all are fucking acquainted with this. Uh, same way Harry Potter, I use those two a lot just because most people are acquainted with that. Darth Vader is a great example of where he, where someone can fail at intimacy versus isolation. There are so many different types of challenges and like kind of things that get thrown away. For Anakin Skywalker, he had a little bit of uh, role confusion as well at the end. Boss at the same time, this is where his intimacy crumbled. Is when uh, Padme, I think the she's an innocent archetype. She dies because she kind of like uh, 
sees her boyfriend or like Anakin, like just horrible, you know, and then it kind of hurts her heart. That's where the crutch comes in for Anakin Skywalker's next thing. So what Anakin Skywalker, now Darth Vader is doing, he's doing what's called a compensation. Okay. So with that being said, his isolate, his intimacy crumbled. And now he's in the adult stage, generativity versus stagnation, as opposed to the young adult stage. Now he dedicates all of his time, all of his life to building up the empire. Okay. So this is where things get a little bit out of control. And you can kind of write these characters. This is actually a very common thing you see in adults is they can become too latched on to their work. They can become too latched on because there's something, they're missing something inside themselves. They're, they're, they're lacking a little bit of intimacy. Or they're still carrying crutches from earlier stages of life. Those don't go away, okay? You always got to carry that with you and you got to conquer because that's the number one thing you got to do. Carry the crutches, make it seem like you could carry it on back. Don't make it seem, do it. If you had a bad experience in your childhood, which is often where these crushes kind of <laughs> kind of deliberate. Uh, I think there's, I'm pretty sure there's about eight stages, maybe six. Uh, maybe picture a ball and chain around your ankle. You know, I mean, if, if you really, if something bad happens here, then you're still carrying that crush. But you could snap the chains, okay? And that's what Darth Vader does as soon as he reaches the next stage, uh, kind of senior area, which is kind of where I'm going to do the next video. And then I think I'm going to stop. I don't want to do like young kids because most people don't write protagonists that are super young. But um, maybe I will because sometimes things that happen there could really, like I said, just bring it towards uh, adulthood. So with that being said, you know, ladies and gentlemen, stagnation is another classic kind of trope. Um, I think Han Solo kind of embodied this a little bit, the explorer archetype. He embodied this a little bit as he was kind of just kind of floating through life. Uh, getting drunk all the time and, you know, just hanging out at the cantina. Uh, yeah, so you you come, I'm sure you'll either, A, become one of these people that that nail their generativity, nail their stagnation, unfortunately, or have trouble balancing between the two. So that, I guess I would call it like kind of the middle way. I'm going to try to keep this one also under 10 minutes. But so if you're writing an adult character, you want to have them latched to a goal, goal that is higher than themselves. You want to basically... I don't want to say completely polarized, but make the polarization evident. You know what I mean? So if you've got a good, you know, nice protagonist that is an adult, okay, maybe putting them in the intimacy versus isolation stage is kind of like a a common, uh, what's the thing, kind of, I don't want to say mistake, but it's like psych psychologically speaking. Um, that only happens if you're stuck in intimacy versus isolation stage. So let's say you, you'll see the stagnant... Um, old dude at like a party with like uh 20 year olds and like Woo -hoo -hoo. uh that happens because either a they were too isolated at that station they had that crush maybe something happened inner alchemy went the out the other way <laughs> but uh anyways those are good ways to add stagnant challenges to your adult characters like they battle themselves because they still carry these crushes so with that being said i think if you're writing a character that is an adult going through the stagnation social <laughs> social stage of life i think it's good to really present them a challenge of kind of snap to reality like get back to reality um a lot of times where you want writing a generative character really puts a good protagonist in the mix like it, it's really good to have a generative adult character especially if you're writing this because they push a story forward in a positive way there's somebody you can look up to you know what i mean and oftentimes an adult will have a good uh influences especially a generative adult on the teenagers which can help them with a, a role confusion versus identity so with that being said uh great great protagonist a great protagonist option is in a generative and adult uh so you could also make an ascension dissension plot with that you can kind of go versus uh, vice versa so you can do an ascension plot where maybe um the stagnant adult because of stagnant latching themselves onto a higher goal which is very important so in the end generativity is very important because it, it adds to the meaning of life that's literally what it is that's a, you, like the meaning of life is to do something for yourself and others okay that's you're trying to make a positive imprint on society. So when you're not doing that, you enter into the stagnation. What are some bad mental illnesses that can come from stagnation? Depression. Uh, not more like neurological disorders, more, more like, you know, it, tempered anxiety, things that really just kind of stick with you. Uh, Long-term anxiety, which is not good because it could uh, literally reshape the brain. Uh, here's another thing you could kind of like uh, incorporate and understand. Uh, once you get to the senior citizen age, once you're in the adult age, these huge changes to your paradigm are a lot more difficult than they were in young adult stages, than they were in um, teenage stage, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so with that being said, that's another thing you got to keep in mind, too, is that once you're an adult, these uh, paradigms are really hard to switch. And it's not even just because of the, the ego. 
It's the literal programming of our brain. Uh, after a while, neuroplasticity, gray matter, just kind of like, and that especially shows in the stagnant adult. So with that being said, uh, con uh, constructing protagonists that are in the adult stage, keep this in mind. Okay, generativity, okay, versus stagnation. Stagnation, uh, you know, uh, no offense if this is you, okay, uh, people out there, but maybe like, uh, I picture, I always picture like some drunk dude at like a trailer park is like, man, you know, fuck me, you know, forget you. Uh, yeah. And then I also picture like a uh, generative adult is kind of like, I don't know, maybe Luke Skywalker. He's more of a young adult. Though. I don't want to say that. Um, I don't know, man. Let me try to think of one. Uh, <laughs> well, actually, I now think Obi-Wan Kenobi. There he's gone. Back to the Star Wars. When he was in that adult stage, he was training Anakin. He was uh, part of the Jedi Council, whatever. Like I said, that's not novel, but still fiction. A uh, great example of somebody who's generative and moves a story forward. It's basically the adult you want to root for. So with that being said, keep it real. Uh, like, subscribe, do the damn thing, and keep on writing. Don't stop writing. Get that 500 words in today. Get that 1,000 words in. Don't stop. <laughs> uh, all right. Have a good one, y'all. Uh, we're doing seniors next, and then I think we're going to cap it because there's no psychosocial, psychosocial stages of life when you're dead. Maybe there's psychosocial stages of death. That would be cool. Uh, anyways, um, I don't. maybe that could be a good fiction, people. Maybe writing uh, the next psychosocial stage after you die, uh, depending on what you believe. Anyways, see you later.